that's great. To maintain symmetry, I'm going to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and to maintain symmetry, I'm going to tell you a 100-year story. <laughs> anyway, you saw an excitable inorganic chemist. <laughs> now you're going to listen from uh, an excitable organic chemist. <laughs> Right? to maintain symmetry once again. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I, I'm a neurologist, and I uh, primarily, my subspecialty is seeing patients with, uh, with dementia. And it's a, it's, a, it's a huge problem, as you can imagine. As you know, United Nations and World Health Organization, which was formed in 1930s, every year when they put out uh, a document about the problems that, are, that affect the majority of the people in the world, I mean, that's their, their business to bring to the attention and address issues that, address, that affect the majority of the people in the world. And over the years, they have been putting out these documents where they say HIV is a big thing, malaria, cholera, those are the things that kill most of the people and, in the world. And uh, about two or three years ago, they put out a document telling the nations of the world, dementia is a problem. And if you don't address dementia, you'll be bankrupt. And this is the first time the United Nations and the World Health Organization put out a document like that about dementia. So dementia is not a very difficult condition to diagnose because if somebody has a cognitive problems, memory problems that affect with the activities of daily living. That's why they go and see the physician, etc. That person has dementia, cognitive problems, memory, etc. They affect with activities of daily living. But there are many uh, forms of dementia, and Alzheimer's disease is one of them. And when I see people, and you can look at the literature about all the, uh, uh, all the clinics that see patients with uh, dementia, you can be 80% sure, 90, 95% sure that it's Alzheimer's disease, for example, but never 100% sure. And that is the problem, because in order to be 100% sure, you have to wait for somebody with dementia to die to look at the, uh, at the brain to make the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Well, that is just not good enough. Because if you look at over the last uh, many years, the only uh, uh, drugs that we have right now to treat symptoms of Alzheimer's disease were discovered 20 years ago. It, it does not affect uh, the course of the disease, it particularly it affects the symptoms. We have no cure. And not finding a cure for Alzheimer's disease and dementia is not an option because a lot of people are having problems like this, you see? And what are the problems here? If you look at over the last 10 years, you want big numbers? If you look at the last 10 years, over 200 clinical trials in Alzheimer's disease have failed. That's huge. That's a lot of money. So the question is, why are these clinical trials failing? People are not stupid, you know? These targets are well thought out, et cetera, right? But there is a problem in that if you are not able to diagnose Alzheimer's disease as precisely as you can, then it becomes problematic. So if you look at people uh, with Alzheimer's disease. What do they have in their brain? They have cognitive problems, and if you look under the brain, under the microscope, they have these proteins called plaques and tangles. And you say, somebody who has got cognitive impairment, which I think is Alzheimer's disease, you look under the microscope, you see plaques and tangles, that's Alzheimer's disease. That was described 100 years ago by Alzheimer. Somebody else actually described it prior to that. We won't get into controversy here. So <laughs> Alzheimer's disease was described by Alzheimer as we know today. So you look at plaques and tangles. But if you look at the Nunn study, who has heard of the Nunn study? Some of you have. So the Nunn study was a longitudinal study where scientists 20, 30 years ago uh, went to a monastery in the United States and asked these nuns whether they would participate in this longitudinal study where they examined these nuns every year, did cognitive testing and every test you can imagine, and they asked them to have a look at the brain when they died. They don't donate the brains. And if you look at these brain tissues, there are people who died who are cognitively totally devastated. They look at the brain and they're plaques and tangles. And then you have other individuals who died around the same age, and you look under the brain, and they have plaques and tangles just like the other person. So what is going on? That is the difficult part. You see? So very clever people of some years ago said, well, you know, if plaques and tangles are required to make a diagnosis, so let's look at a patient. We say, this is dementia, and let's look, uh, make molecules that go and bind to the amyloid, and let's do a PET scan. And it worked. It worked. 
So right now, you can you know, go to states and you can have a PET scan done for amyloid and it will be positive. The problem is these non study and many other studies have shown that about 20 to 30 percent of cognitively normal people have plaques and tangles. That's the difficulty, right? So, you know, they have the story of Sister Martha and Sister Agnes, you know, from the monastery. And, you know, one of them, and I, I had clearly dementia, the other one didn't. And the one you didn't, and you looked in the you, PET scan, and you say, oh, Sister Agnes, you know what? You're 95 years old. You have preclinical Alzheimer's disease. You're going to get Alzheimer's disease. Sister Agnes is going to tell you to go suck a lemon, right? <laughs> because she doesn't care. You know, what is that? You know, so this is one of the problems that we, that we have. So, so a hundred years ago, Alzheimer looked after a patient. She was in her 50s, and she had cognitive and behavioral problems. And when she died, Alzheimer was in a, in a, in a, condition, in a, in a milieu in Munich where people were looking at how to preserve brains, how to stain brains, Nissel, and all those big names, you know, were there. And so when this lady died, Alzheimer was in the right place at the right time. He was able to preserve and examine this brain. And he saw that in the brain there were these plaques and tangles. That is what we now know as Alzheimer's disease, right? Cognitive behavioral problems that has plaques and tangles. So he looked at the brain tissues, you see? If you fast forward 80 years, people are still looking at the brain tissues, but with new technology, new reagents, et cetera, et cetera. And we realized that there are certain population of brain cells that die. And the drugs that we use today to treat symptoms of Alzheimer's disease were discovered because of that understanding of looking at the brains again. So for us, if we want to de determine what are those targets for diagnosis and for treatment of Alzheimer's disease, you need to look at the brain tissues. So about 25 years ago, Ken Rockwood and I walked over to the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia, and we said we would like to establish a brain bank. Because you can't, you know, there is no satisfactory model of Alzheimer's disease, or any, I dare say, human disease. So you have to examine human tissue, right? So we started this uh, with the help of Alzheimer's Society, and subsequently with DMRF, we have established a brain bank. I see Debbie back there. She was the first person in the lab who helped us uh, establish that. So over the last 20 years or so, we have had over 1,200 brain tissues donated to the brain bank. And when we started out, I wanted to do research with these brains for my own research, and I realized, well, that's not good. There must be a clever person out there in the world who will find a, uh, 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 the cause and cure for Alzheimer's disease. So we send these brain tissues to anybody in the world. And this is the only one in Eastern Canada that does that. And that is to, through the help of Alzheimer's Society and, uh, and, the, uh, and DMRF. Back to my work. Looking at these brain tissues over the last 20 years, we have found that there's other proteins, and I can, I can go into details later on, in gory details. <laughs> but I won't do that to you. <laughs> anyway, we have found another protein using different uh, methodologies that is a better marker than the amyloid and, tau, and, and you know, the, the tau protein that people have traditionally looked at. And so as a chemist, excitable, Organic chemist, <laughs> what? <laughs> organic chemist. And we have been uh, making molecules that target this particular protein. And we are making these molecules radioactive so that it can be used with a PET scanner or a SPEC scanner. So when somebody comes in, the probability of diagnosing or, or being able to diagnose Alzheimer's disease better is, is far better than using the traditional amyloid plaques uh, or amyloid imaging agents where we know about 20 to 30 percent of normal people have these plaques. So our task is to find a method to properly diagnose Alzheimer's disease during life so that we don't have 200 failed clinical trials as we go forward. Because as I said earlier on, I keep on saying, this is my mantra. Somebody said it somewhere, but I've stolen it. That <laughs> failure to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease is not an option. You know, because we are living longer, and the prevalence of this condition is getting longer and longer. So that's what I do. Thank you very much.